Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a model showcase video for this undefined scale Porsche Tiger One. Now the model that we have here is built for my own personal collection and it's not for sale and or purchase. However, like I often mention these model showcase videos, I often take on commission built projects from vehicles ranging from 135th scale all the way up to 1 6th scale. For availability and pricing information, that information would be best by contacting me through the email address listed below, which is info at eastcoastarmory.com. Now this model here is built mostly out of the box, and in this video we're going to go over some of the features that this build has, as well as also review the base starter kit. So stay tuned, there's a lot of cool content coming at you. Before we go any further with the video, let's go ahead and take a quick walk around this model. And this model here is the Porsche VK4501 Tiger, or at least that's what it's trying to pass off as. What this model is, it's a caricaturized version of the Porsche VK, but it's from a video game called World War Tunes, which is yet another video that falls into the EastCoastArmory.com's channel of being an April Fool's Day tradition. Now, World War Tunes is an online video game that is a class-based system, and it takes place during a World War II time frame. Although, unlike the other World War II games, which lean more towards historically accurate, or at least they attempted at one point to be historically accurate, World War Tunes has a different spin on it, where it, it uses this caricaturized, cartoony type art style. From what I was able to see with the class-based system combined with the cartoonish aspect of the art style, it's similar along the lines of something like Team Fortress 2. Now shortly after this video game came out a number of years ago, a line of model kits were released that were official game merchandise replicating the tanks from the video game. The tanks all utilized the same cartoonish aspect and caricatureness that was found on the on-screen counterparts. Now apparently this game is pretty popular because every year it seems like there are new kit releases for new developed tanks that are in the video game. This Porsche Tiger over here is included. One really cool aspect about these model kits is that they really encapsulate the look, the feel, and the attitude of the vehicles in question. And you can clearly see that at one quick glance of the model that we have here. From here, let's go ahead and take a step back to when the model was first started to get a good idea on what the base starter kit supplies you with. And here's the model at the start of the project. For the base starter kit, I'll be utilizing this undefined scale, caricaturized Porsche Tiger kit from Mang. This model here is a very recent addition to the stash and hasn't been sitting in for very long, and the model itself was acquired off of Amazon.com. These kits here are very commonly found anywhere from hobby shops to craft stores, as well as, of course, online retailers. Price-wise, they're pretty affordable and can range anywhere between 16 to about 25 US dollars. Now, starting with the box art, here we have the Porsche Tiger, of course, with its stylized video game caricaturized format. And we have the remainder of the graphic design, which is typical for the World War II's kits. Like I frequently mention, one of the reasons why they have this type of a layout is, of course, for just overall aesthetics. But also, if you have another kit, like you're selling it in a, in a store, if you have the two together like this here, it creates this banner type aesthetic, which is great for just shelf marketing. The rest of the graphic design is as follows. We have here a sample of what the vehicle will look like once built. We have the corporate information on the video game company. Some more of your typical type of typography and graphic designs which are found on these World War Tunes kits. Here we have two screenshots of what the vehicle looks like in game apparently. And of course it is Olga approved for what it's worth. Now cracking open the box, first I'm gonna go ahead and remove the cellophane that the thing was packed in. And just like with all the other World War II's kits, these models open from the side. And the kits themselves are sealed hermetically in a bag like we have here. Now opening up the kit.
All right, well, first and foremost, we'll start with the hull. Here you can see the stylized Porsche Tiger dimensions, as well as the detailing, which is molded in. It does have its rear engine grills, as well as a few of the other details that are found on the Porsche Tiger family. But of course, they are in this stylized, caricaturized presentation. Here we have the lower hull. Overall, the plastic quality is very, very good, as well as the tooling itself. Keep in mind, these kits are from Meng, and Meng is known for producing very high-quality plastic model kits, such as the other World War II kits that I've reviewed in the past, as well as even something a little bit more on the serious end, like the Char 2C French Super Heavy Tank, which I also did a review on a little while ago. Plastic itself is nice and thick which means it's very durable. You're not going to have to worry about the thing cracking on you when handling. And judging by how the other kits went together, these kits do make for a very simplistic build. Here we have the wheels. Four sprockets, of course, being a Porsche pattern of vehicle. The real wheels, again, are very stylized, which is the whole concept of this kit. I will say that this kit already looks to be a much simpler build compared to the Tiger 1 kit, which I did a review on last year. And that kit did require a few more components in order to assemble. However, this kit here being a newer release, apparently the newer release World War II's kits tend to be more simplistic in their overall assembly as well as also better detail as well. So it's a double win. There are also less things like seam lines and other things to contend with, which was more common on their first generation kits. So, here you can see the turret. Of course, it's very Tiger 1S, but slightly different than your standard traditional Henschel pattern Tiger. And here we have the tin work which is very distinctive on the Porsche pattern, as well as the other fittings that we have here. Moving from the plastic parts takes us to the tracks. This kit having all single piece rubber band type track. They do have some detailing found on them. If I could get the camera in focus, there we go. The insides are fairly void of any detailing, but again, for the subject matter at hand, this is more than more than suffice, I should say. Here we have the decal sheet, which are water slide decals. Now, in the past on other Mang models, I've had nothing but really good results with the quality decals that are supplied with their kits, and I'm not surprised if this model here is any different. But of course, more information on that is to come once the vehicle is built. Moving on to the instruction sheet, the instructions on these World War II vehicles are a lot more interesting compared to your usual type of instructions found on most model kits where it's just a white background with some CAD drawings on how to assemble the build. On the World War II vehicles there's a little bit more showmanship which is seen here. We have here the part layout and the actual kit assembly. As you can see, these kits are again very easy, easily put together which is a hallmark on these World War II kits. And they are nicely engineered from my past experiences with them. This model here should be no different in terms of simplicity as well as overall quality. Starting with the model's running gear, all of the components that you see here are the kit supply ones and were assembled out of the box with no mods being necessary. Now, a few things I want to point out is first with the pattern of the row wheels. Now, if you look at the design of the wheels, there are actually two different patterns found on this model. The one in the center here is different compared to the two on the other ends, and this is the same exact thing found on the opposite side. The reason why I have to mention this is that if you're building the model, you can easily overlook this and install the wheels in an improper way. And with the way the kit is designed, this is something that can happen. So just be aware when you're assembling the build, pay attention to the instructions because they are properly labeled in the instruction sheet and you have to pay attention to that. Same can also be said, by the way, with the hubcaps that we have on these sections here. 
Now something similar can also happen with the sprockets. With the way they are molded, it looks like that there are some spoke detailing found on the reverse side. And you may be confused thinking that that's the detail face and that's the portion that gets mounted face outward. Unfortunately, that is not correct. And if you go with that route, you're gonna be making a mistake with the kit. So when it comes to the model, again, pay attention to the instructions. They'll have everything illustrated out in a very clear and precise way. And from there, that takes us to the track. Now the track on the model is actually really nicely done. I really did like the surface detailing found on this model. Now, one aspect on the other World War II's builds that I've noticed was the ability for the running gear to be functional in that if you take the model and push it on a rug or something, the tracks and the wheels will articulate and will roll. However, on this model here, that's just not going to be the case. With the way the model is designed, we have these two sections that we have here and here. Now, on the real vehicle, they would be a roller on the very early renditions of the Porsche pattern tanks, and eventually they would become these skid rolls. However, on this model here, they act as basically an anchor, and if you notice, they pin the track to this format that you see here, which gives you that really cool and distinctive bend found on the Porsche pattern vehicle's track. So with this model here, being able to make the running gear functional is not going to be possible. From the running gear now takes us to the side hull detailing. Now on this side here we have a tow cable and a bit of spare track. Now the detailing is nicely rendered on this model, but just like with the other World War II's builds, the pieces are a very snug fit onto the model. And just like I mentioned in those other videos, in order to really help streamline your building process of one of these builds, I recommend taking a nail file or a needle file or some sandpaper and removing just a little bit of material from the pegs that are found on these parts here. By doing this, this will loosen up the tolerances and allow the piece to fit onto the build in a more streamlined and easy manner. This will also cut down the risk of possibly breaking the pieces upon installation. And on the reverse side, we have the rest of the Pioneer tools, which would consist of the shovel, the axe, the sledge, and the cleaning staves. Now, for the cleaning staves, I went ahead and painted them the same way that you'll see them on my other builds that are on the channel, in which the center sections would be wood rods. However, the end points are painted in brass, as they would be found in this material on the real vehicles. What a simple brush of brass paint. This really makes the pieces pop and gives the model an extra bit of kick that otherwise would have been missing. And on top of that, it's one of those features that you don't have to do any other scratch building for. You just take a paintbrush, put a little swipe of paint on them, and you're good to go. From the sides takes us to the rear. All the detailings here are stocked with the box. Nothing really much to mention except for the rear grill work. I like the way they were rendered on this build. They even went ahead and did a little bit of mesh work found on the inside portion of the slats. It's a nice little feature and it really pops out when you weather the vehicle. Moving along brings us to the front. All the components like I said before are stock with the exception of the bow machine gun. With a pin vise I went ahead and drilled out the small little section over here. This is a common feature I do on my builds and one that always makes them look a little bit better compared to just leaving them stock. Right next to it we have here the driver's visor. The unit is nicely rendered. Only thing I would recommend is with a little swipe of gloss black paint on the inside to simulate the Panzer glass. It's always one of those tricks that makes any model pop. From there this now takes to the top deck and the only thing I want to point out is with the antenna. This is the kit supplied unit and just like with the other German tanks that I build, a nice little swipe of brass paint is added on this section here which would be present on the real vehicle. Also the bottom portion I painted with a black rubbery color as again this would be this material on the real vehicle as well. Here you can see the remainder of the engine deck. Now just like with the grills I mentioned before they do have some nice detailing found on these sections over here. And for the fuel caps I add a little bit of fuel stain which is a common technique that I do on my builds. From there this now brings us to the turret. Now the turret did need a little bit of body work in order to get it to the condition that you see it here. Now with the way the kit is designed the hull goes together in two halves and the way the tooling is you're not going to experience any seam work 
on those sections and with the type of material and the thicknesses that are on this model makes for a nice chunky robust little build however on the turret the robustness is true but with the way the turret is designed and it's unavoidable with the way the mantlet has to be fitted you are going to have a seam running along the center portion here of the turret rear now this was just deleted with very standard modeling techniques with the use of glazing and spot putty and just a little bit of sandpaper I was able to polish it away to the way you see it now with the way the model is designed there are no shifts of the plastic in which you know one half is a little bit thinner than the other piece or the alignment is off that wasn't present on this build it's a nicely engineered piece and it goes together very easily and which really aided with the body work that had to have been done on the front portion here the barrel does go up and down. Now this is basically identical to the one on the other mid-production Tiger that is on the World War II's lineup and the piece is again nicely designed. Now from there just brings us to the mantlet. Now the mantlet I went ahead and improved it slightly from the kit original. With the kit original the holes here for the visor as well as the machine gun were I believe with the machine gun it was omitted altogether and the holes here for the visor were if they were present, they were slight little indentations or they were just omitted altogether. I, I'm a little bit hazy on that. It's been a while since I built this one. But in order to improve the kit further with a pin vise and with a set of small Dremel bits, I went ahead and just added these pieces of detailing. This is a great way to improve the look of the build without putting too much extra elbow grease into it. Now from the mantle it takes to the turret roof. Now the detailing on here is primarily stock with the exception of the modification that I made here to the visor. Now the visor is integrally molded to the piece but it's missing its periscope detailing. Now rather than just painting the whole face with the gloss black which is doable but it can be a little problematic. You run the risk of having some spillage occur here on the roof. What I went ahead and did was I took a clear piece of sheet styrene. This is the type of material that comes with blister packages or like a cookie tray you know the the type of stuff that you tend to throw in the trash or in the recycling I took that material and I painted the rear portion of it black and then once it was the paint was dry I mounted it to the visor by painting the rear portion black this now leaves the front portion to be very glossy if you could see here and this gives a nice sheen to the piece and makes it look like the piece is actually glass this was a very simple trick that I did to this build and in my opinion was, is one that also really helps the build overall. From the visor it takes us to this pop-up periscope thing. I'm a bit curious on exactly where they were going with it as German tanks don't necessarily have this type of piece or specifically on a Tiger. This is I guess something that would be more seen on like a Stug or some kind of like a Yag Tiger. Something along those lines. Not so much a Tiger one. but. I just went ahead and mounted it out of the box anyway. Of course, a little lens portion I painted in gloss black. And from there, it takes to the cupola. Now, the cupola is a static piece. It does not function like it does on the other builds. The periscopes are present, and they were painted with the, again, the same gloss black that I mentioned before. And from there, this now takes us to the loader hatch. Now, the loader hatch on this model is fully functional, and I got to say, it works really, really, really well. The hinge design is one where the hatch is firmly kept onto the model it's not going to fall off and the piece functions absolutely flawlessly as you can see even just holding the model upside down the piece just wants to open up and the piece of course closes in a similar manner from there, this takes us to the paint and the markings. Now, the model's overall paint and finish is the German Panzer Grey, which, of course, is extremely appropriate for this particular vehicle. For the markings, they are the kit-supplied ones and were applied in the locations which were mentioned in the instruction sheets. The markings were easily applied, just like a occurring occurrence on these World War II builds. The decal quality is very nicely done. I didn't run into any issues with the uh, application of the decals or with the way the decals lacquered on. Overall, they were very nicely done and seems to be a common occurrence again with these World War II kits. At the end of the day, I'm really happy in how this build turned out. Just like with the other World War II builds that I've done in the past, this model here was no exception with the level of simplicity and with the speed that the model just came together. From there, this now brings us to skill level and recommendations. Just like with the other World War II's builds, 
just about anybody can put one of these kits together, and that's really part of the charm that they have. From someone who is a utter and complete novice who's never touched a plastic model kit in their life to the type of person who's done thousands of models and has a whole collection under their belt. And also anyone in between can easily tackle one of these builds. Now, who would I recommend this build to? Well, anyone who is clearly a fan of the World War II's video game, all of their kits in their lineup do not disappoint, and if you're a fan of the game, chances are you're really going to dig these kits. These models here also make a really good gift for anybody who knows that model builder in their life and wants to give them something unique and something that's going to be a noteworthy addition to their collection. If you're a fan of World War II German armor, one of these models here would be a great addition to your collection, and it's something that can be a bit of a conversation piece. These models really do add a bit of uniqueness to your collection and are also a very fun way to enjoy your Sunday or Saturday afternoon. I would also recommend this model for anybody who's a fan with working with those characterized model kits that are on the market. There are a lot of kits from various manufacturers of weird egg-shaped jets, ships, cars, as well as even figures. This build here can easily fit into a collection like the ones I just mentioned without anyone batting an eye. And with that, that wraps up this model showcase video for this undefined scale, caricaturized Porsche Tiger Heavy Tank. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to this channel where it's a great way to keep up to date on new posted content, be it small scale model showcase videos like this guy over here, or the larger scale project update videos that frequently get posted to the ECA channel. Another way to keep in the loop of new posted content is by liking us on Facebook. There I have more photographs of this particular build that have been posted, as well as the other smaller and larger scale builds that are showcased on this channel. Furthermore, don't forget to swing by EastCoastArmory.com for more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detailed components. Thanks for stopping by.